so thank you very much for the nice in introduction am i audible yes sir thank you so much sir thank and you. are the slides visible yes sir yes sir okay thank you very much so i feel honored to be part of your workshop organized by iasr i am very thankful to all the organizers especially dr ranjit and the associates so i enjoyed the lecture by dr professor mukesh yadav sir it was really a very nice lecture he has dealt in detail about the medical certificates and various aspects relating to the professional misconduct pertaining to the medical profession and i really enjoyed the lecture though the topic is very close to his heart he is in fact master of the case laws and i'll try to cover the topic in more comprehensive manner and we had discussed that the case laws will be discussed by professor dr mukesh yadav sir and i'll try to discuss the simple things in a comprehensive manner relating to medical certificates and i start with my presentation and the basic things relating to the medical certificates first as the doctor is usually called in the courts as a witness so i'll try to sum up and give brief introduction about the witness in a simple manner witness is a person who gives sworn testimony uh, evidence in a court of law as regards to the facts or inferences that can be drawn therefrom all persons are competent to testify or give evidence before the court of law unless they are prevented from understanding the questions put to them or giving rational answers to those questions due to tender years or extreme old age or the disease means a person of any age might be a child of say 3 years 4 years or an individual of 90 year, 90 years 100 years or even more than that are competent to give evidence before the court of law as per section 118 of the indian evidence act 1872 provided the child or the person understand the questions put to them and he or she is able to give rational answers to the questions put to them irrespective of the age so what are the types of witnesses two types of witnesses common witness or ordinary witness number 2 expert or skilled witness common witness is also known as ordinary witness or witness of the fact or witness of occurrence means a person who gives evidence about the facts observed by himself that is the first hand knowledge rule means the person has seen the things with his own eyes and if he, the person gives evidence about such a thing then such a person will be called as common witness and if a, for example if a person has witnessed a uh, traffic accident he will be called common witness to that particular incident and a common witness cannot draw any inference from observations made by him or he won't be able to express any opinion or on the observations made by others nor can he volunteer a statement before the court of law whereas the next witness that is expert witness is able to draw any conclusion or deducing opinion and inference from the facts observed by himself as well as noticed by others and the examples could be a doctor a fingerprint expert ballistic expert chemical examiner handwriting expert etc and the definition of expert witness in our in our law is given in, in indian evidence act under section 44 of the act and an expert witness can volunteer a statement before the court of law means when the expert thinks that the uh, conclusion of the case has been taken in a wrong direction by the presiding officer then he can volunteer the statement before the court of law however a common witness cannot volunteer a statement before court of law so now the doctor as a witness a uh, doctor as a witness can be both a common witness as well as expert witness when the doctor describes the injuries on the body of the patient then he acts as a common witness and also when he gives the evidence about the time the date and the place where the patient was received by him or attended by him at that stage he will be termed as a common witness however when he gives his opinion about the nature of injuries the manner of infliction of the injuries and the probable duration of the injuries or gives opinion regarding the cause of death and the time since death which of course will be given after um, by studying the science or by the knowledge of medical field then he will be acting as an 
expert witness. Now, what is evidence? In a simple language, evidence means all legal means which help to prove or disprove any matter in question. And it includes all the statements which the court permits or requires to be made before it by the witness in relation to any fact under inquiry. And such statements are called as oral evidence. And the evidence also includes all documents produced for inspection of the court. And such documents are called as documentary evidence. It means evidence could be in two forms, oral evidence when the oral statements are given before the court of law, and it could be documentary evidence, means any document when produced for inspection of the honorable court. So far as medical evidence is concerned, can be given before a court of law, and it can be again in two forms, the same that is oral evidence and documentary evidence. Oral evidence is also known as parole and documentary evidence. So first I'll discuss the documentary evidence, which includes medical certificates, the topic which is to be discussed in detail and majority of the part of the topic has already been discussed by Professor Mukesh Yadav sir. Then number two, medical legal reports and the third is dying declaration. So broadly documentary evidence which the doctor may be required to produce before the court of law pertains to these three things that is medical certificate, medical legal reports, dying declaration. So far as medical certificate is concerned, the definition of medical certificate was given by the earlier speaker, Professor Mukesh Yadav, that is part of documentary evidence. Medical certificate is a part of documentary evidence in the form of written statement from a doctor or a qualified health professional, which attests the result of the medical examination, the investigations and the treatment plan or management of the patient. And medical certificates, I will may skip over this slide because it has already been discussed that generally refer to cases of ill health or sickness, medical fitness, fitness for employment, for insurance claims, for tax benefits, for insanity or unsoundness of mind and death certificate. So far as the medical certificates are concerned, these are also required for vaccination certificate for travel purposes that is fit to fly medical certificate, particularly relating to the pregnant female then legal purposes like medical legal reports, injury reports or postmortem reports, the reports pertaining to the cases of filing, dying declaration and dying deposition. Then the validity of the medical certificate it is valid and accepted in a court of law only when it is issued by a qualified registered medical practice, practitioner that is the doctor who is registered with the Medical Council of India, the National Medical Commission or any of the state medical councils. The medical certificate of ill health, it must include uh, the particulars of the patient, including the name, age, the gender and address, then exact nature of illness, the degree of incapacitation or injury, the exact period of leave or time of that is uh, medically justifiable. Then date of medical diagnosis, date of issue of the certificate, the thumb impression or signature of the patient at the bottom of the certificate. So these are the important guidelines which should be incorporated in the medical certificates. Then it must be signed by the doctor mentioning his or her name, address, qualifications and registration number. As has already explained by Professor Mukesh Yadav, the certificate should also be legible. It should be written on the doctor's letterhead and it should not contain any abbreviations more and must avoid medical jargon wherever possible. Medical certificates are legal documents. It is therefore a misnomer to mention that the medical certificate is not valid for legal or court purposes and it should be avoided. In majority of the OPD slips of any hospital, you'll always find that it is mentioned that this certificate is not valid for legal or court purposes. Though it is a misnomer term and it must be avoided because any medical certificate is termed as the legal document. And it is an offense to issue false certificates. The case law have been uh, discussed in detail about the same by Dr. Yadav. And the doctor or civil as well as criminal responsibility it means he'll be held guilty of negligence and fraud if he issues a false certificate, particularly deliberately misleading or inaccurate medical certificate. And the doctor would also face disciplinary action under the Indian Medical Council Professional Conduct Etiquette and Ethics Regulation 2002, which has already been discussed in detail by Professor Yadav. And 
most important uh, legal aspect is that never backdate the medical certificate. Then there are certain guidelines regarding maintenance of medical certificates or medical records, which have already been discussed, like uh, uh, Regulation 1.3.1 of the Indian Medical Council Regulations 2002, according to which every physician shall maintain the medical record for a period of three years in a standard pro forma, which is given in the Appendix 3 given by the Medical Council of India. And the next section that is 1.3.2 is that if any request is made by the patient or the authorized attendant, then the medical certificate should be issued to the applicant within 42 hours of the application. Oh, sorry, within 72 hours of the application. And appendix has been given by the Medical Council of India, which includes all these details, the particulars of the patient, like ASX, address, occupation, date of first visit, clinical note, or summary of the case, provisional diagnosis, then what investigations were advised and what is what are the reports of those investigations, then diagnosis after investigation, the advice, follow-up, date, observations, the signature in full and name of the treating physician. Means this is the standard format about the medical record which has been given by the Medical Council of India. And we should try to fill up this performa or the particulars of the patient and particulars of the doctor according to this format which has been given by the Medical Council of India. Then Dr. Mukesh Adar told in detail about the MCI ethics regulation 7.25, that is not maintaining medical record of the indoor patients for a period of three years as per regulation 1.31 and not providing record of the medical uh, record to the uh, within 72 hours of the request of the patient or the authorized representative, then such an uh, act will amount to professional misconduct, which has already been discussed in detail. And failure to provide medical record to the patients on proper demand will amount to deficiency in service. It has been also held by various consumer fora. Then it was also discussed in detail by Professor Yadav that the doctor will maintain a registered of medical certificates giving full details. Then always enter identification marks to the patient and keep a copy of the certificate as office copy. Must record the signature and or thumb mark at an address and at least one identification mark of the patient on the medical certificate or the report. And the medical certificate shall be prepared as in Appendix 2, which I'll be showing in the next slide. And Section 1.34, which was also discussed earlier, that effort should be made to computerize medical records for quick retrieval, that is electronic med medical record. And this is the Appendix 2, which has again been given by Medical Council of India, that is the form of certificate which is recommended for leave or extension or communication of leave and, and for fitness. So signature of the patient or thumb impression is at the top, then the particulars, the identification box, then particulars of the patient, particulars of the doctor, and the place, signature, date, registration number, et cetera. And there is note also that the nature and probable duration of illness should also be specified. And this certificate must be accompanied by a brief resume of the case, giving the nature of illness, its symptoms, causes, and duration. Then the second is death certificates. Uh, from 1st April 1979, under Registration of Births and Death Act 1979, registration of every birth and death has been made compulsory throughout our country. And a medical certificate sorry, a medical officer is legally bound to issue a death certificate stating the exact cause of death if a person whom he has been attending during his last illness dies. However, the medical, medical officer is not entitled to charge any fee for issuing a death certificate. The doctor cannot delay or refuse to issue death certificate because of the fact that the fee has not been paid by the uh, relatives of the patient or by the patient. And when there is any suspicion of foul play or death is caused by due to some violent act or due to unnatural means or due to some drug or due to some poison, the police must be informed in all such cases before the body is removed for cremation or buried. Then the death certificates consist of two parts. Part one, that is the disease or condition directly leading to the death of the person which is again subdivided in three parts, A, B, and C. A is the immediate cause. B and C are the morbid conditions or the conditions 
which has led the terminal event causing death of the person then uh, the sequence remains that a must be due to b and b must be due to c so the basic pathological condition is that on the lowermost line and is the one that is used for statistical purposes uh, in the medical record department then part 2 of the death certificate contains other significant conditions which might have contributed to the death of the patient and these are not related to the immediate cause of death so this is um, i think in brief about death certificate now the details of medical legal reports medical legal reports are the documents prepared by a medical officer or a doctor in compliance to or demand by an authorized police officer or a magistrate and these are referred to chiefly in criminal cases relating to assault murder rape and poisoning etc and uh, what are various examples i'll try to incorporate as many as cases of medico legal which sometimes the doctors usually forget all cases of trauma which suggest commission of an offense by somebody is a medico legal case in all accidental cases like road traffic accident rail accident industrial or factory acts fall from height especially when there is likelihood of patient's death then bites or injuries caused by animals snake bite etc then suspected or evident homicides or suicide including attempted suicides then unknown or unconscious patient every unknown or unconscious patient brought to a hospital is labeled as medical legal case because the cause of unconsciousness is never known and there is no eyewitness to comment upon the region of unconsciousness of the patient then similarly undiagnosed trauma or unconscious cases where the cause is not clear then cases for age estimation which are usually uh, referred by the court or by the police brought to the medical officer then broad dead cases with improper history or where the detailed history is not at all known to the accompanying person or when there is suspicion of any foul play then death of a person occurring within 24 hours of hospitalization without establishment of a proper diagnosis It means the patient was perfectly well before 24 hours before bring, uh, coming to the hospital and the person has died after 24 hours of hospitalization then mass casualty due to natural or unnatural cal calamities or disaster then post mortem cases cases requiring post mortem examination or also the medico legal cases then the persons under police custody or judicial uh, judicial custody then death on the operation table cases of alleged med medical negligence burn injuries electric injuries due to any cause cases of asphyxia due to hanging strangulation drowning suffocation etc all are medico legal cases all cases of sexual assault or sexual offense then pregnancy of an unmarried girl or under age that is below 18 years of age again a medico legal case then suspected or evident criminal abortion which is might have been conducted by a dai quack or registered medical practitioner such cases will again be the medico legal cases and suspected or evident poisoning cases then mass food poisoning cases of drunkenness alcohol intoxication drug overdose and drug abuse or vitriolage that is acid throwing so all these cases are the medico legal cases the medico legal report might be required to be prepared on all such cases and if <clears throat> the there is no one to give consent for preparation of the medico legal report at least the police must be informed in all such cases and the medical officer should use his professional judgment to decide any other case not enumerated in the list that has legal implications meaning thereby that any case having uh, legal implications must be informed to the police and the details of the uh, patient or the particulars of the patient the place of occurrence and the incident and the necessary treatment should be started immediately and the treatment should never be delayed for want of legal formalities in any case then uh, common medical legal cases has already been uh, shown that is cases of injury medi wound certificate age certificate importance potency certificate drunkenness certificate examination of victim of rape accused of rape a victim of sodomy 
accused of sodomy postmortem report then what are the parts of medical legal report in a comprehensive manner i have described that the parts of medical legal report could be three that is preamble or introductory part or the preliminary data means the first part then body of the report that is the effects or the findings observed by the doctor on examination of the patient then opinion or inference drawn from the facts or findings observed on examination then the first part that is the introductory data is nothing but the particulars of the patient with the other details of record by which it can be sorted out or it can be traced afterwards means the medical legal report number the date name father's oblique husband's name of the patient age sex caste occupation address then brought by means name of the accompanying person or police official then date and time of arrival date and time of examination the place of examination then the particulars of the daily diary number or first information report registered by the police then consent of the patient and marks of identification all these parts from the first part that is preliminary data data or preamble of the report then the body of the report it consists of the findings or facts observed on examination by the doctor and it includes description of all the relevant objective findings noticed by the doctor and must include the full description of the injuries in terms of the number of injuries type of injuries the size that is dimensions or measurements length width and the depth of the injuries then the shape situation and exact location that is distance from two bony landmarks or two anatomical landmarks direction etc of all the injuries must be noted in detail and any other finding that is examination of clothes because examination of clothes may be as important as examination of the or for of the injuries seen or the body of the patient so it must be done in all cases particularly the cases of injury then any investigation or referral etc should be asked for then commonest forms of the injuries could be noticed as abrasions means kharoch contusions or nail or bruises then laceration or lacerated wounds incised wound stab wound or punctured wound firearm wounds burns and poisoning etc which is beyond the scope of discussion in this particular topic that is medical certificate the third part of the medical legal report would be the opinion or inference that is the kind of weapon used whether it was a blunt weapon sharp weapon or pointed weapon or firearm or burns etc then the duration of injury it must be based on the changes due to healing and repair of the injury noticed by the doctor means all the injuries should be looked for their changes due to healing and repair on the basis of which the doctor will be able to give the probable duration of the injury then ultimately the doctor is also required to give the nature of each injury whether these are simple grievous or dangerous and each page of the medical legal report is to be signed by the doctor with the date in case of post mortem report the cause of death and time is death is required and it must be mentioned in all cases and the relevant articles like clothes weapons and other belongings should be described in detail the these are sealed and handed over to the police after obtaining receipt in all medical legal cases as this will be the case property then what are the duties of doctor in medical legal cases to ensure safe medical legal practice there are broadly two duties one is duty of medical care and the second duty is the legal responsibility and i'll stress upon this that medical care gets priority over medical legal formalities especially when the patient is serious first and foremost duty of a doctor is to save the life of the patient and to give the urgent necessary treatment and it was held in a very famous case uh, pandit parmanand katara versus union of india and others in 1989 that no doctor sh uh, shall refuse to treat a patient in emergency situation and in the same case the medical council of india filed an affidavit stating that medical council of india expect that all registered medical practitioners must attend to the sick and the injured immediately and it is a duty of the medical practitioner to make immediate and timely medical care available to every injured person whether he is injured in an accident or otherwise because life of a person is far more important than the legal formalities and i usually say that all legal formalities stand suspended 
till the patient's life is out of danger it means the duty of the doctor is to provide medical aid first even in medical legal cases and this duty has been extended to the private doctors also as uh, exemplified by the high court of andhra pradesh in a very famous case patipati vankaya versus state of andhra wherein it was held that primary duty of the doctor is to save the life of the patient and then the doctor should inform the police document the clearly all the injuries observed by him in medical legal cases then i have put some slides uh, where there are common mistakes which might be committed in dealing with medical legal cases by the doctors and the precautions will be suggested simultaneously mistake of not being aware of the primary duty as i explained earlier that the primary duty of the doctor is to save the life of the patient and the legal formalities will be done only after the patient is attended first the necessary treatment is provided first of all then inadequate history or failure to take detailed history will not be able to the doctor will not be able to arrive at a definite definite conclusion about the diagnosis and about the manner in which the injuries might have been caused then refusing to attend a medical legal case citing jurisdiction problem it is stated that the doctor has no jurisdiction any patient from anywhere can come to a uh, government hospital as well as private hospital and the doctor cannot refuse to attend a medical legal case then acceding to request by the patient or the accompanying relatives not to register a medical legal case it usually the case particularly a case of suspected poisoning the relatives usually say that the person has consumed some tablet for headache or for abdominal pain and they usually insist that the police should not be informed the case should not be registered as a medical legal case however we should not accede to the request of the patient if we think that the patient is serious and there might have been uh, ingestion of some poisonous substance then it is our duty to inform the police in all such cases then failure to report or provide information to the police about medical legal case again it will amount to destruction of the evidence and it, the doctor may be penalized for the same if the doctor fails to report or provide information to the police then failure to report certain medical legal cases particularly the snake bite cases the dog bite cases all such cases are usually not informed to the police and if uh, death happens in such a case then it becomes very difficult for the authorities or for the uh, hospital uh, officials to get the post mortem done until unless the police is informed no one will be coming for the post mortem examination and the relatives usually compl complain afterwards after cremating the body that the police was not informed the post mortem examination was not done and on account of which they are facing difficulty in getting the compensation from the government so in all such cases the police must be informed then unnecessary delay in documentation of medical legal case the documentation should be done immediately when the patient has been treated properly and has been stable then the medical legal documentation should be prepared Im immediately then failure to mention own particulars on the medical legal report then failure to note down the identification marks clerical typing or typographical mistakes in the medical legal re report like am in place of pm uh, particularly relating to the time period then using short forms or abbreviations of various terms like the doctors usually report cw for clean wound or lw for lacerated wound loss of consciousness as loc all such abbreviations must be avoided then examination of a female patient patient without the presence of a female attendant examination without or inadequate consent means there should be proper consent for examination there must also be a female attendant while the female patient is being examined by a male doctor then failure to maintain professional secrecy means the information about the disease or about the sickness of the patient should not be divulged to any third party then issuing false certificate or misleading exaggerated or inaccurate medical legal report then failure to answer the query raised by police in any medical legal case the police may uh, raise any query to clear doubts regarding the manner of infection of the injury regarding the kind of weapon used the, do the doctor is duty bound to give answer to the queries raised by the police because ultimately the police will have to investigate the case completely and will have to file the chalan before the court of law and there might be certain queries raised by the police in medical legal cases and doctor is duty bound to answer the queries raised by police 
then failure to provide discharge card or referral note or advice to the patient then allowing or taking away of body of a medical legal case dying in hospital or that of a brought de- brought in that case by relatives without informing the police means whenever a, a brought that case is brought to the hospital the circumstances of death are not clear to anyone in all such cases the police must be informed and the police will arrange for post mortem examination in such a case so that the cause of death can be established properly then the third uh, example of the medical certificate dying declaration which is a statement given by a pe- person or a patient who is likely to die of some unlawful act and states share the circumstances which have been brought him or her for medical attention that is the manner in which the he or she has sustained injuries and how he or she was brought to the hospital it is the duty of the attending doctor to get the dying declaration recorded and it is usually recorded by a magistrate and if the time permits the doctor should call upon a magistrate to record the dying declaration through the police but if the condition of the patient is grave or serious he should record the statement himself with the following precautions means the medical officer has to certify that the patient is in a sound mental state that is compost mentis and oath is not administered uh, for recording of dying declaration because of the belief that no part, no one will die or to, no one no one will wish to die with a lie on his lips or dying person tells only truth if the dying declaration is being given by a female a lady doctor or a nurse should always be present and the dying declaration should be recorded in the vernacular of the patient that is in the person's own words in presence of two disinterested witnesses the questions put to him or her and the answers to them must be written in full detail no outside influence or assistance and no leading questions should be put forward the declaration may be made orally investigating officer should not be present while dying declaration is being recorded and when the doctor is not available a police officer or sarpanch or any other person can record it however it is said the validity of the dying declaration will be maximum when it is recorded by a magistrate when the patient is unable to speak for example due to extreme weakness or cut throat injury the statement may also be recorded in form of questions and signs and when concluded the uh i guess we have lost a lost connection from uh, vijay pal sir so i'll just request everyone to uh, wait for 2 uh, to 3 minutes uh, uh, once he join back in the meantime uh, i'm sure that all the participants have uh, filled with a pre test form if not uh, kindly fill the form and i would uh, request everyone to kindly fill the and uh, confirm that you have filled the form in the chat box
So I think there was some technical problem. Yes, and sir. I was discussing about dying deposition. Dying deposition is a statement by made by a dying person on oath, and it is recorded by a magistrate in the presence of accused or his lawyer, who is given full full opportunity to cross-examine the dying uh, person, either personally or through his or her lawyer. And the presence of a doctor is not essential. The attending doctor has to certify that the dying person is in a fit state. or sound state of mind that is composed mentis to make a statement however dying uh, declaration is uh, not allowed in our country and it has greater value than the dying declaration because of the fact that accused or his lawyer has an opportunity to cross examine the declarant and since it is recorded by a magistrate in the presence of accused or his lawyer it retains its full legal value even if the victim survives however as i explained earlier dying deposition is not followed in our country then i try to get five c's of proper medical certificate means uh, chrono- these should be in chronological order that is date all entries to the document then clarity use accepted medical terminology when describing a patient's condition these should be complete that is full, fill out all forms completely and provide complete information these should be concise that is brief and to the point and uh, use approved abbreviations if at all these are to be used otherwise i suggest that the abbreviations should never be used and the full term should be explained then confidentiality that is all information in patient medical record are confidential then accuracy of medical certificate means these should be neat and legible handwriting must be legible scribbling must be avoided diagnosis or prescription in capital letters is a better way blue ink is preferred as it differentiate original from the copy and highlight critical items such as allergies make corrections properly and if alteration or any correction is to be done it should be done in a proper manner that is avoid overwriting never alter the notes retrospectively never use whitener or correction fluid or scratching and all alterations made must be initialed with the date and time without obliterating the original entry in such a way that what has been struck off should also be legible for example drawing a sing- single line over the word or the sentence and sometimes the medical certificates are without signature of the issuing doctor and it is said that an unsigned medical certificate has no legal validity then correction of the personal or identification data of the patient like name is father's or suspense name address etc should only be made on the basis of affidavit affidavit attested by a notary or first class magistrate then amend on electronic record by striking through rather than deleting and overwriting the original entry and after inserting the new note add the date time and the doctor's name then there is a term spoliation it is destruction or alteration of a medical certificate by an unauthorized person that is nothing should be added altered substituted deleted or removed from the medical record and to prevent the appearance of spoliation health care provider should follow the director general health services guidelines while letter number 10368 ms dated uh, 31st august 1968 that is when correcting an error strike out the incorrect statement with single line and make the correct entry in the record place your initials date and time next to it as has already explained then the question is about the accessibility of the medical certificate of the patient only the treating doctor and the other authorized clinical doctors can assess the medical record of the patient and non clinical doctors and other administrative staff if requires the scrutiny of any medical record might be for research purpose then written approval of the medical superintendent should be taken and in all medical legal cases and death cases the medical superintendent's written permission is must to assess them in insurance cases release of such information without prior consent consent of the patient is permissible because the patient had waived off, waived off his claim of privilege at the time of taking out a policy with the corporation then the uh, time limit 
for which the medical record, medical record should be kept under safe custody routine case records of adult persons should be kept up to 3 years after death of the patient up to 6 years after death of or completion of treatment of the patient and for uh, income tax point of view for 7 years in case of chance of litigation or major surgeries 25 years in case of minors 21 years as the minors have the right to sue the doctor within 3 years of uh, from the date of majority date of majority in our country is 18 years and 3 years is the limitation period and so in case of minors the medical record should be kept up to 21 years and these are the broad guidelines which are given by the director general health services in the hospital manual which was published in 2002 that is the record of opd patients should be kept for 5 years in patient or indoor patients or admitted patients for 10 years for medical legal registers 10 years however the punjab medical manual provides that the medical medical legal report should be preserved for 12 years then about supplying the copy of medical uh, medical legal report to third party or the accused a medical legal report or post mortem report is a report which is prepared by an expert and it is of confidential nature and it is not a public document as such an accused or third party is not entitled to get a copy of the uh, medical legal report during investigation stage of the case and in such cases a no objection certificate should be obtained from the investigating officer of the case before a copy of of the medical legal report is supplied and original record may also be demanded how by the court and the same is to be submitted and the receipt should be obtained similarly if the io wants the original record then it may be issued to him under proper receipt in cases of sexual and domestic violence survivors or acid attacks the law mandates that copy of complete medical record should be made available to the patient free of cost means no fee is to be charged to supply the medical record to the survivors of sexual and domestic violence and failure to do so will invite penal provisions against the defaulting doctor then many hospitals have their own guidelines for issuance of copies of various records to the patient or next of kin however under rti uh, act patient treatment record can be asked either by the patient or the opposite party then hard copy is to be given computers are now widely used in institutions or hospitals for electronic records but still hard copy is required for the following documents that is the consent need to be on hard copy referral to the doctor again need hard copy then police case need again hard copy and certificate of fitness should be on a hard copy so now conclusion medical certificate forms an important part of a patient's management maintaining and preserving the patient's medical record in a proper and methodical way is the responsibility of the concerned doctor and medical certificate must be accurate up to date placed in order and complete in all aspect then proper medical certificate forms are tight defense against allegations of malpractice or negligence then excellence in medical documentation reflects and creates excellence in medical care and an accurate and complete certificate is your best defense in a court and an altered or incomplete certificate is the best weapon against you remember that honest and best maintained certificate will save you from crisis and claims not just once but all times so with this i finish my talk thank you very much